So let's take a, a tour of the electric fence now, starting with the unit that I described above. This is the Tsar unit, which um, I've had for, I think, uh, over five years now. And um, uh, when it did fail, uh, the manufacturers replaced it. So there's, there's the charger there, which is the, um, the mains power. And then the, there is also uh, this, this wire that comes in from the solar panel, which is separate, as I showed in the photograph above. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to turn the unit off uh, because um, that light there is uh, is pulsing, as you can see, the, that, that pulse there is coming straight from the mains charger. We've had some cloudy days uh, and so the um, solar power didn't charge it up properly, so I've got it on mains power just at the moment. So I've turned it off because I'm going to be touching the electric wire as I go round. Uh, let me just... Um, I'll go back to the solar unit again, um, the, the, um, the solar panel that powers that, which is, is mounted separately. Uh, I'll put my hand on it so you can see the size. It looks bigger from this angle because the donkeys are down below, so it looks like a full-size solar panel, but it is just um, sort of two hands long, one hand high. Uh, right, so um, donkeys are still eating their breakfast. Now, while I'm up here, um, I'm just going to, uh, to do a, a sort of panoramic um, shot around. So we've got two terraces, uh, the lower terrace there, which I call level two, level one here, uh, which is where the stable is. And um, hello, Aitana, you looking to see who I'm talking to? I'm talking to my phone. Yes, as usual, yes, she finds that very weird. Uh, okay, so... Um, one thing that I can just demonstrate up here is the way that I use the electric fencing at a high level to connect different parts of the donkey's field. Right, so I've got, um, I've got two high wires here going from the solar unit, uh, the, the, the pulse unit rather, um, to uh, central locations in the two fields. And then from there wires kind of um, separate out uh, to different parts of the fence and this is where uh, the tree management comes into things. So um, Robin who uh, first inquired about the fencing uh, which prompted me to do this uh, article on fencing uh, was worried about the donkeys getting through to the trees. Now here I've got three uh, strands of wire around each tree. So the electric fence here, I can touch it because I've turned it off as, as you saw back there. Uh, so the, the wire um, is in three levels, one at usual sort of donkey knee height, one at nose height, and one uh, higher up above donkey head height because they will reach up and try and get to the trees. These are olive trees. Now behind the electric fencing, therefore, I have uh, some chain link fence, which you can see here. Let me just go back a bit. Chain link fence around the tree trunk. Because if they do get through the electric fence and do get to your trees, they will not only damage the upper branches, as you can see there's bark been stripped from here a few months ago when they got through the fence. Uh, but if they get to the trunk, your tree is dead. If they take the, the bark off the trunk, your tree is dead. So here's another tree over here. Similar thing, I've got um, chain link fence around the, the base of the tree, and then the three strands of electric fence. Same with this one over here. All of this electric fencing needs uh, tightening up. Uh, I had it on my list of things to do as uh, item number three, but I've moved it to item number one uh, in order to um, to do this today and, and, and therefore make this um, uh, video and, um, and this blog article about electric fencing. Right, so each tree has a little sort of square around it, or almost a sort of cube, uh, if you like, of, of uh, electric wire, and then high level uh, strands of wire between each section uh, of the field so we have a high level wire going from high posts to the next tree. Now, uh, around um, the chickens here, 
um, I have a low level electric wire, single strand at knee, donkey knee height. This is to stop them pushing at the, the base of the chicken's fence to try and get the chickens food. They will damage that fence with their hooves if, they, if I don't put um, uh, strands of electric wire there. And these fiberglass poles uh, can be sawn up. You, you, you can, if you've got damaged um, fiberglass poles that are splitting, you can just uh, chop off the good bits and make these short poles that are good enough for one strand. So there's a tip. Now I've, I've got electric isolators here on a metal post and that wire is coming down from, if you can see that up there, high in the sky, uh, a strand of wire that goes back to the um, charger unit, the, the pulse unit. So a high wire also uh, comes across to, to this point here where I don't know if it's going to show up on the video, but you can see strands of wire going to uh, across a high level to the next trees. So this wire that comes from, there's that solar panel up there that goes to the pulse unit, and then a high wire here, which goes down to level two. Now on level two, I've got um, some physical metal fence around the two trees there because uh, that's one of my best olive trees and I certainly don't want don donkeys damaging that but I also have a sapling there and um, uh, then a pomegranate tree and that's my only pomegranate tree on this level uh, the next pomegranate tree is about half a mile away uh, so I don't want that pomegranate tree being attacked by donkeys so I've got metal fence around that section and further over there's another good olive tree which still produces fruit um, and that has physical metal barrier around it and electric fence uh, between the donkeys and the metal fence because they will damage metal fencing. So there we are, that's, the, that's my system and so far in, um, in the time that we've been here, which is now just over four years, the new place here at El Paral, in that time uh, I have lost um, only one tree, I think, is that right? Yes, one tree uh, with, with, uh, with my system. And that was an old orange tree, you can see it down there on level two, which I've left there as a scratching post. Um, that tree uh, was my first learning experience here with donkeys and trees. They got through uh, what was a metal barrier, actually. I had that one surrounded by a metal barrier and they pushed the post down in the middle of the night uh, because the posts were not um, sufficiently embedded in the, in the ground. They have to be really well concreted in metal posts or donkeys will push at them. Uh, the final thing to say about fencing uh, from my experience here is that um, if you've got a good uh, metal barrier or even a wooden barrier like a, a typical um, equine paddock setup. Here, here we have my example of the safety bars that I've got between level one and level two because I, as you can see there's a there's a steep drop there um, from level one to level two and so these are safety barriers. Uh, but you will not find donkeys damaging uh, those in any way. Um, well, obviously, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's um, robust metal posts. Um, they would damage wooden uh, barriers uh, of a similar kind, but this is the typical setup you find in a horse's paddock, isn't it? You know, and and um, two bars and um, posts spaced out at about two meters. Uh, that's um, that's going to deter any donkey. No, no donkey's going to go through that. So. Um, Different types of fencing then, uh, electric, chain link fence, there's the, uh, the chain link fence next to the road here and you'll see that I've got um, electric fence um, before the chain link fence. In this case this one's at a slight distance from the, uh, the metal fence uh, to stop people feeding the donkeys. Sometimes cars stop and people take um, things out to give to the donkeys and uh, uh, I don't like um, 
any old stuff being given to the donkeys. Um, and so I've got a, a fence here to stop them going near to the metal chain link fence uh, if people are trying to feed them. Uh, so that's my setup. Um, finally, the very, very last thing, the very, very last, finally, um, if you have an electric fence, I think it is the law that you have to have a sign uh, for the public saying that there's an electric fence there. I mean, the, the public can't actually get through that anyway, uh, but I've got my sign here, Cercado Electrico, um, just to indicate that this is a live fence. Uh, it's also a deterrent to um, to people uh, trying to break into the, the field, uh, which it's unlikely that would happen. Uh, but um, but it's it's just one more uh, security measure, really. But I think it's legal. Uh, it's legally required. If you've got an electric fence that's uh, accessible to the public, it has to have uh, a, a warning sign. Although the shock that you get is only quite slight in most cases, the um, the sign has to be there because um, uh, someone who with a you know heart condition or something like that, if they got electric shock may actually suffer serious consequences. So that's my electric fence set up and there's the Morris who likes challenging fences, don't you? You love challenging fences. Yeah, no fence is going to stop the Morris. No, no, if you want to go through and eat trees you will. I know, you're a naughty donk. Right, say goodbye everybody, say goodbye Aitana. Uh, that's my electric fence video and I hope that was useful.